Yellow! So this is take number two! So this is kind of just like a quick update. Okay, I don't think it's gonna be very quick, but it's just an update of my life. I'm gonna talk about church stuff, talk about my favorite music, because I don't have a book to show you guys because I've just been reading the Bible. Um, and um, my relationship with God. Oh, and also like another really big news and I'll say that in between. Um, but yeah, here we go. Number one, with regards to church, um, I've been appointed head of the choir, which I'm super, privileged and thankful for. I don't know whether you've come across this whole thing about um, if you're a choir member, you are not just a singer, but you're a minister. Do you guys know about that? I ever heard about it? I never really understood that until last Sunday when God explained it to me. So you know how um, if you're preaching on that day as a pastor or um, as, a, as a teacher or whatever, you're a guest speaker, um, you stand on the pulpit and you share the word and that is like the ultimate privilege. Not the ultimate, but it's like a massive, massive privilege. As a choir member, or like a choir leader, whatever you want to call it, worship leader, um, you also share that same platform. And as you sing those songs and as you lead people in worship, you unveil God to the people, just like how the preach of the word unveils God to the congregation. So that is why we are called ministers of the gospel because we're not just singing any random, you know, sing song, um, but we're singing songs like The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases His mercies never come to an end You sing songs like that where you basically tell the congregation and you encourage them to sing along with you and you teach them about the love of God and how his mercies are new every morning. Causing them to meditate and to ponder about the greatness of God and about his awesomeness and his love and his kindness and his mercy and his grace. And that is how you minister. So yeah, that's number one. Um, another thing is, which is really, really, really quite big and I'm so grateful to the Lord for, is that I'm an illustrator, kind of. Asterix. <laughs> I think this month or last month I was given my first illustration job, um, meaning I'm actually being paid um, to draw, which is great. You might have seen my Instagram, um, or you might not have, um, but basically I like to draw and I like to doodle in my spare time. It's like my hobby, like whilst I'm watching the TV or something. And um, yeah, and this job came along um, because my boss is getting married and she wants someone to illustrate her wedding invite because she wants it to be personalised but she doesn't know anyone so I was a bit like look through my feed like and then she actually ends up liking what I do so she gave me the job. With regards to music I have found a group or a band that I absolutely love I just feel like they sing my heart's song you know and they're called United Pursuit um, before they kind of came up on the autoplay on YouTube and I just skipped them because I just didn't really like it um, but yeah, recently I've just fell in love with their music and especially the song called Hidden, I feel like it's my, my jam to the Lord, you know? So I'm really grateful for God for them because they've really helped me on my journey back to intimacy with God. So that swiftly leads me on to talking about my relationship with the Lord. Recently I've released a video um, titled Feeling Distant From God. And when I say that, I don't mean that I'm actually distant from God because I'm always in his presence. Like I'm living in his presence 24 seven. Like I am one with the Lord. So I can never really be far from him, but it's more like my, speaking in terms of, you know, my relationship and how deep we are in our relationship. But um, yeah, anyway, I feel like in this season of my life or whatever you call this time, um, God has brought me back to basics. He's literally been tearing down these strongholds that I had in my mind. So one of the main, main ones was the fact that I thought God was disappointed in me. And I carried that around for ages and how I'm not doing what God wants me to do kind of thing. And I'm not where I'm supposed to be and you know, God doesn't want me to worship, he just wants me to intercede for souls and win souls and you just kind of like feel that, like God I'm not doing enough. I just, I was in that space, right, and I am so, so grateful to the Lord 
um, for a brother who lives in South Africa across the pond and beyond um, who just broke down those walls in my heart and just gave me the truth. And I feel like it's all rooted and grounded in this idea of having to work for his love. I've always kind of been brought up um, with the idea that nothing comes for free and you have to work in order to get where you are. You know, which makes sense. In school, that's all you've done. You've like worked, you've worked your butt off, you revised to get your A's and your A stars and that's just how it happens, you know? And so like he, he said the question, it was like, he proposed the question, so Emma, do you think that kind of mentality has filtered through into your Christianity? The fact that you feel like you need to be working in order to seek God's approval. And I was a bit like, maybe. Um, and so I just was brought back to basics. And he was just like, Emma, the fact that God is disappointed in you is a lie from the pit of hell. Um, because Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you can be made righteous, not by your own works, but by faith, right? And um, he sent me, um, he told me to listen to a message by Joseph Prince called Condemnation Kills and I recommend that, just type that into Google, uh, into YouTube and you'll find it. It's, it's an awesome, awesome teaching. But then the Lord used that as like the springboard and so I started to study about Romans. Um, and there's something that he says, so if his good deeds, this is talking about Abraham, if his good deeds made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about you know if it was because he was a holy just man then he could boast about how he's righteous because of his own works right but that was not god's way for the scripture tells us abraham believed god and god counted him as righteous because of his faith so when people work their wages are not a gift but something they have earned right so in my whole life i just feel like you know i should work for it right but people are counted as righteous not because of their works, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. So yeah, this whole idea that God's love and his righteousness is a gift, it's free, you don't work for it, you don't work for it. Um, so you cannot disqualify yourself from something that you never qualified for in the first place. My works can't disqualify me from being righteous and being a disappointment because my works never earned me that righteousness, never earned me that innocence and that guilt freeness in the first place um and so he says something profound and he said when god looks at you he doesn't look at your right and your wrongs but he looks at jesus christ and what christ did for you on the cross because if it really is by our works then jesus died in vain you know and he definitely did not die in vain um so yeah i just feel like god is just stripping me back and taking me back to the basics and like rebuilding my mind and i'm so and I'm so grateful, like, I'm so grateful for that because I just feel like I want to live a life with God that's f where I feel free. I want to function from a place of love and um, enjoyment and pleasure as opposed to functioning from a place of I feel guilty, hence why I need to do X, Y and Z. That's just, that's just oppressive. So anyway, that's what I've kind of been doing, um, just enjoying my time with God. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for subscribing and for watching my videos. I love it when I hear your comments and read your comments and your messages. And yeah, man, I'm just grateful I get to do this for the Lord. For f Yeah, because I actually enjoy chatting to the camera. But I'm just really grateful that God uses this to touch live lives. So yeah and i just want to pray for you um, and lord i just pray for the people watching lord and i pray that um you also just show them your love and your truth um and your kindness lord and i just pray that their understanding about you increases um and that they just enjoy their fellowship with you lord because you're amazing um in jesus mighty name amen amen god bless you guys thank you so much for watching bye Mwah. lipstick we look flopping the mother! This video is going to be about um, how we see God, our perceptions of the Father essentially. For me, yeah. I haven't been consistent and that's just me growing up and me changing obviously. I think I make it more than what it is. What do you mean? Do you get what I mean? Like, no. I overthink it too much. Like, when I know that he's always there. 
whenever mm -hmm. I need. But if I don't speak to him for like a period of, I don't know, six months, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like, oh, he doesn't want to talk to me. Not he doesn't want to talk to me, but yeah. like, oh, it's going to be a bit awkward, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you sort of sometimes forget that no matter what, he loves you. Mm. Like, no matter what, he's there. I remember when I was at university, Fiona would be like, people were taking drugs, 